Welcome friends. In this video tutorial we're going to go over how to solve some um, rendering problems in Blender 3D uh, as far as animations and dealing with hair hair meshes and some of the noise and artifacts that we get even when we use high uh, sampling um, numbers or uh, low denoising numbers. And There's three things I want to go over to help get rid of some of the issues we see so what we have here are some clips that I rendered out. Um, my timeline is, is set for uh, 1080 resolution. And you see some of these clips I have really bad um, noise or aliasing going on with the hair and some clips it's not as bad. Um, so I'm going back here. For example, this first character um, is kind of this regular 1080 resolution um, using denoising and uh, maybe about 1024 samples and this one is shot using a higher resolution um, with the noise threshold sent all the way up to, to the max and uh, using more samples. Uh, same thing here, these first couple of clips of this character, you see a lot of the noise going on here in the hair textures. Not so much with the skin or clothes, but with the hair. Um, the same thing here. And still a little bit here, but not as much. Same hair mesh, but different texture. And then this character, you don't see a lot of at all but at the same time this is a darker colored um, uh, hair texture. So three things went into this. Um, first thing is changing out the actual uh, image texture in the in the shader for the hair. The second thing is the settings for rendering and the third thing will be the, the denoiser, maybe not in that order though. Um, let's go ahead and get started looking at what happened. So the first thing I want to bring up is one of the videos that helped me get to this. So I think this is Daniel Coleman. I'm currently so working on a bigger on project and I tried to decrease my render time because and I had some struggles with it. Actually it was around 15 to 60 minutes like each frame and the final animation will be something around blender, 1 to or 3 or minutes and that would only, take only weeks or even uh, one or two months. So after weeks of burning my PC hardware, I found this mind-blowing. Um. So let's take a look at that. So in my blend file, uh, so we go to render settings, and we see in the denoiser, I'm going to use a value of 1.0, which we rarely ever do. It didn't, but use max high max sample rate, and I'm using the OID denoiser, and making sure that I have the den denoising data set. And I'll show you my compositor just simply using those new values that you get in the render layers and using the denoise node. And also using a higher resolution. So I'm aiming for 1080, but I'm going one step up to 4K, or maybe two steps up if you, if you count 2K. I'm using 4K, and in my um, video editor, I just shrink that down to 50 percent to get that 1k resolution because a lot of the data will be preserved um, better when you downscaling your resolution so that is most of what we do for the render settings let me go through the rest of the render settings make sure i'm not didn't miss anything so again using high resolution than what you really want and by using a high noise threshold that 4K won't take as long to render as if you're just natively doing 4K rendering. Um, I'll show you in, um, I have rather simple scenes here, not nothing complex to this. But, um, you know, in, in this setup, uh, most of these I'm using Sheep at Render Farm. And in some cases, 
just one character from Daz Studio along with the background is only taking uh, about half a minute, 30 seconds, 19 seconds, 18 seconds, in some cases four minutes depending on who's rendering it. But uh, for the most part, not, uh, not very high render times and these are 4K images. They will take up quite a bit of space but not a lot of render time. On a reference uh, per frame render time is 26 seconds. Let's see, let's go back. Um, anything important? These are my light path max bounces. So, other than transparent, not very high. I'm not using refractive caustics for my scene. And nothing else is really port important, but uh, I'm using uh, persistent data. And then filmic and high contrast. I think that's about it as far as render settings. I am using an HDRI for my scenes and I also use Pro Lighting Studio for the lighting but you don't have to use that you can just make sure you have your character well, well lit. I'm getting into one of the things I mentioned earlier is the hair texture so my characters come from Daz Studio these are Genesis 8 figures that I'm importing into Blender with the Diffeomorphic importer and typically when you do that you get this kind of semi-complex setup and in those cases, that's where I got a lot of the um, noise and, and aliasing and interference in my renders. Not that anything's wrong with um, the setup, it just doesn't work well with animation. Still images are fine, but not animation. So what I did instead is I kept the transmission image from that setup and kept the DAS transparent node, which I could have traded that off with using a mixed shader and transparent BSDF node but I kept this one and then I just instead of using all these um, nodes I just used a principal hair BSDF specifically using the Huang um, scattering model and then using melanin concentration to, and adjusting the values to get the type of hair color that I'm looking for. In my other model where I had uh, blue hair or purple hair uh, which is right here. In this case, I had using the old setup. Now I'm using the principal hair BSDF in this shot. What I did was I I turned this all the way down and then changed the tint of of this um, of the mesh so that I get um, a hair dye type of effect. So that helped uh, get rid of some of the um, noise. You see a lot of noise here in the original one. And using the principal BSDF, you don't have as much going on. Same thing here, a lot of noise, not as much. Same hair mesh, different um, materials going into the shader. Also, you notice for this character, um, take note at the edges, you got a lot of interference going on here and right here. And then toward the end of this clip, you see more on the other side of the head right here. Got a lot of flaring going on. And then when I use the new shader, uh, not as much. I'm gonna go to the end of this one. You don't see as much going on, if at all. And so I, that this is what I like to use to resolve this issue. Um, Cause I tried a bunch of different denoising techniques the optics by itself really didn't um, help. And then I also tried to use a third party plugin, which works fine in most other cases, but not in this case. The Pix Pigeon Tools bag, uh, the Super Image Denoiser, um, using temporal denoising. And that's great for using, getting denoising out of animations versus still images. It just didn't help in this very specific case. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty cool tool. I also tried to use um, Topaz Video AI to get re rid of the denoising, but again, this is not purely um, noise in these scenes right here. This is not purely noise. This is um, no a bit of noise, also uh, a bit of aliasing. So, unless you got a good way of anti-aliasing um, this hair material, your denoising is not going to help you all the way. Uh, full disclosure: I'm also using 
an adjustment layer in my video editor. So I add a adjustment layer and a Gaussian blur to that layer and a value of five to help smooth things out to give it a slightly better look in my um, more finished clips. But in a clip like this with darker textures, um, that adjustment layer really isn't uh, needed. So uh, there you go. And, and again, this is shorter here, so maybe it's less chance to be have interference. But again, most of these clips are um, 4K, and I'm just downscaling them to 1K to get a lot more detail in, the, in those shots and get a lot less interference. So hopefully this was helpful to everybody. And if you have any other tips of how to overcome these issues, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.